Hey everybody, welcome back to Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. I'm Bill, and this is the absolutely beautiful Just Flight Aero. It was just released a couple days ago. This is my first real flight with it, and it's a $45 general aviation flight sim add-on plane. And hopefully I will show you why it's worth $45. I think it's worth it. You know, it's it's not for everybody. I you know I even talked to Just Flight a few years ago at Flight Sim Expo, and they hey, kind of agreed. Oh, <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome back to Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. I am Bill, and on this week's episode, we'll be flying a brick with wings. <laughs> Q. Q, I love you, man. That's freaking hilarious. What's up, airplane man? Q has way too many hours in an arrow and it really it is a brick with wings which is funny because the the archer is not um it's i maybe it's a little bit more brick than uh than a 172 is but it does weigh a lot up front it's a much heavier plane up front than the archer is um but i i love this plane because it was what i used in x plane back before i really even started um, my flight training. So this plane helped get me to, uh, you know, get me to the point where I could solo both cross country and initial solo um, very early uh, because the the panel was exactly like the plane I was training in, and it was it just everything kind of worked and it, it felt so realistic that it it really helped me, um, you know, get my mind into flying and. So I love it. Yeah, I mean, I, I've had the delivery of the, the plane I started in, um, and this plane, along with Pilot Edge, helped get me to solo and, uh, you know, as quick as I did. So um, this is going to be basically a first impressions of this plane as somebody that used it a lot in X-Plane 11 and is, you know, now it's, it's ported over maybe that's an unfair way to, to put it but now it's now over in in microsoft there I, I did one little validation lap and there are some initial things that are very different from the x-plane version it's essentially still the same plane but um, there are a lot of things that are different about it that i think are important to note um, so we're going to do a couple laps in the pattern here and land i've got real world weather on it's a little bit un let's see what is it yeah, it's really not up to date. <laughs> it's beautiful out right now. Um, and But we'll, we'll do some laps, see how it feels in the pattern, and then regroup and see what it's like in cruise. It's pretty nice cue. I even got the, the white markers. <laughs> yeah, the white marks on the on the tires. So this is the livery of the plane that I currently am renting. It is, it's an Archer 2, uh, and it's... You know the the tires have been changed out now, but when I first started, it had those little paint markers on it for landing competitions. But this is uh, retractable. It's an aero. It's got 200 horsepower, so it's not a high perform uh, high high performance plane. It's got a number of different features in the on in the inside um, that are cool and uh, adjustable. Um, that Just Flight added, which is really cool. So. We're going to go, let's go fly it. Let's just, let's get on the inside. Pilot Rick, what's up? Adoned, hello, cool Camaro. Hello, everybody. Uh, so first off, how beautiful does this panel look? Oh my God, the textures are amazing. Um, we've got grass on the carpet. We've got, the seats are worn armrest is worn the yoke is worn um this is also this is the livery from x-plane 11 so this is actually um you know the 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 old textures and they still look really good um like th this is just the uh, this is an x-plane 11 livery that's brought over and it still looks this looks so much better with the um with the microsoft um lighting engine and everything it's it's crazy so we have the the biggest difference between this and the X-Plane 11 version is we have the Just Flight EFB here, and it's got some interesting um, 
uh, options on here that are kind of cool. So we have aircraft states, ready for takeoff, ready for start, cold and dark. Uh, so that's really useful if you're uh, more casual and you want to just have everything ready for takeoff. It'll do that for you. Ready to start, it'll do everything for you. And cold and dark, which is where we're at right now. Um, moving down here, we have oil, which is nice, and battery. Um, these options were all available on the X-Plane 11 version, but it was on like a static little menu thing that was like right here on the screen. It would just kind of shoot out. So now they've added it into this EFB. Uh, Copilot, we've got disabled right now. Flight info, this is um, kind of live. It you know, shows you your fuel flow, shows you how much fuel you've hey, used. Um, flight info, your range, endurance, all that stuff. It's a very cool little flight computer. Um, Dreadnought, dude, thank you so much for the, the five gifted subs. Dreadnought, cheers, sir. That's hey, awesome. Bird. Killjoy, Toothy, uh, Cloak Raindrop, uh, Lars, 805 Warrior, welcome guys. Uh, Dreadnought, that is super cool of you, man. Thank you. Hey, bird. Whoa, buddy. Scroll down, you can see the list of the various little sound effects that you can, you can enjoy. Um, what's up, Firebird? Did they fix Flight Sim 2020 already? Hey, it's pretty bird. awesome, man. It's pretty awesome. Buddy. So the other things we've got are fuel selector. We have auto fuel selector. Um, so the Piper has a selectable hey, fuel, bird. left or right tanks. Buddy. Piper does not have that. We've got both on Piper. Um, many low wings will not have that um, for a number of different reasons that don't really matter at all. <laughs> Q, 420 bits, dude. That's nice. <laughs> so you can have that set to auto. So it'll it'll swap it on its own. Or we can have that turned off. So I'm going to keep that off. Uh, and then below that, we also have GPS, which is really nice. <laughs> thank you, Q. Thank you for the 69 bits. You child. <laughs> um. Greetings from Norway. That's awesome. Enorma, welcome. Low wing has two in. My low wing has two engines. Your low wing does have two engines. That's true. And they're they're way out in the back. So this is kind of cool. We have the Garmin 100, GPS 100, right here, which I'm not even going to attempt to use. This is probably the state that I'm going to use it in most because the, the plane that I fly is slant uniform and looks relatively close to this. Uh, I kind of like it, so that might be what I what I stick with. But we also have uh, 430, which is really nice. Um, use may vary on that one, um, and then 530, which is you know essentially just the 430 but a bigger screen. Uh, every penny, welcome aboard. Thanks for following. So that that's pretty cool. And then we go back to what I'll just say slant uniform, this 100, I, I don't know why this is just terrible. It's just terrible. Um, so yeah, so that is the selection, um, on the, the GPS, uh, DI, I actually don't even know. Oh that, yeah. Directional. Um, so that is the, uh, the DG here, which is what it probably should be called. Uh, so DG is right there. Um, Firebird, thank you very much for, for the bits, dude. That's um, It has been a while. And cheers. Uh, so that is the directional gyro. And then we've got the HSI. So if we click that, HSI enabled, that gives us a nice fancy HSI. So we're going to keep it very, very... Uh, um, Simple and just keep it on directional gyro only. Um, okay, so that is that. Yokes, that's pretty self-explanatory. We have the clickable hide. Um, we also have the EFB hide there, so that's pretty pretty easy. Um, the the static elements here. So we've got tow bar, we've got chocks, and we've got tie downs. So we can we can you know we just have chocks. We can just have tie downs. 
um, but we're going to take all those off for right now. And then we have the external little features, which are which is very cool. This is the first that I have seen this in a plane in uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator. I don't know if the other ones, um, like the Carinado or the Mooney or any of those other planes, like the 182, if those have um, if those doors open or not. But that's pretty cool. It's not a huge thing. I didn't. I can't say that I really missed it a whole lot, um, because Microsoft Flight Sim has so much to offer, uh, other than being able to open the doors. But this is cool. It's another um, another improvement on on the uh, the standard planes. So we'll close all those things up, and that's pretty much it. So it, to get rid of this EFB. Uh, we've got this this icom thing right here and you just click on that and that turns it uh, turns it off and now it's now it's all gone care not once have it awesome okay cool thank you uh, thank you breeze so that that is it um, it does need to be primed uh, and I can show you where it says that um, we say we see warnings right here priming required. Uh, so that is, that's fine. Um, it's got, um, it's got an, uh, fuel injected engine. I believe the arrow is fuel injected. Q, you could probably confirm that. Um, so priming is maybe not the right way to put that, um, so, but we will, I, I, I did practice starting it and it, and it does seem to start. And so we'll, we'll talk about the, the priming of that. Hey, Q, what the hell, man? <laughs> Dude, Q. Freaking, hey, freaking crazy, man. Q, thank you for the 20 gifted subs i'm gonna welcome i'm gonna welcome all of you people hey <laughs> dude that is way full that is rip, boys we're going full rip <laughs> we are going full rip holy crap dude. yeah that's probably fine yeah full throttle 2500 rpm yeah uh like it's really no no different than the bonanza really I mean, that's like the same the same thing. Okay, Q, we're booked up. We got the plane on Sunday. Um, we can do brunch. Hey, we can take we can take the girls to um, take the girls to brunch. Let's here we. <laughs> I'm gonna pull up. Hey, this is just I'm. <laughs> <laughs> I can't the thing is still going. Where who are we who are we at? We're at Hurricane Alpha. Oh, that might be it. Are we have we caught up? I think we've caught up. Yeah, we caught up. <laughs> You're a freaking animal, dude. You are a freaking animal. I'm pretty sure that I checked this. I, I don't remember exactly. Alright, now I'm gonna maybe we can we can look outside the plane. Uh, we might actually have to turn this into a flight brief for for Sunday. Uh, let's do. There we go. Okay. So we got weight and balance. Here we go. All right. Q, I'm going to have to out your weight. Um, let's do. Oh man, we might be we might be golden. What plane is this? Five three one seven six. Okay, no, never mind. Uh, we're gonna go Archer two. There we go. Uh, we have Q up front, right? You're you're one. Th you said you're one thirty, right? So there's there's that. Uh, Q there. Passenger 100, Julia 140, baggage area 100. We don't need baggage in the back. Um, and then full tanks. Look at that. Holy crap. Q. There's our weight and balance. Done. 
<laughs> I know. Ultimate save. I just doesn't don't we do not have to worry at all. Um, there's our weight and balance, dude. Uh, let's maybe flight bag. Let's let's probably say that we have. Well, let's put bag. We need to we need to put something in the back a little bit more. It's not going to be a hundred pounds. Let's just say we've got mm, twenty pounds. Let's say we got twenty pounds in the back, dude. Full tanks. We are underweight and within CG. Dude, we're we're in, man. We are in. Yep, 100-pound passenger in the back. Uh, that is sweet. Yes, yeah, so we got Julia. We've got passenger. <laughs> yeah, so it's two people in the back, me and, me and Q up front. Uh, two ladies in the back, 20 pounds of, of crap in the trunk. I'm just going to call it the trunk <laughs> from now on. Um, okay, so Q, we got the plane all day Sunday. We're within weight and balance. And we are going to... You guys silly? I'm still going to send it. Great. Sound good? Little Santa Paula action. It's going to be super sketch. All right, cool. Uh, back to the matter at hand. Where, where were we? Okay, yeah. Uh, to the tabs, you know, I don't even, I don't remember what the tabs, that's full. That's full fuel. That's full tanks, 48 gallons. I don't remember what the tabs were on this thing. I don't think I ever actually calculated tabs on that. So that's just full, that's full gas. Um, and four up. Hell yeah. Okay. So the interior, uh, we're going to go over... Oh, we were talking about the the priming and the need for priming on the the little EFB here. Uh, so we have their warnings priming required. So this is a fuel injected plane, uh, I believe. Uh, uh, Captain, is that Bombaso? Bombaso, Captain, Captain Bomb. What up, man? Uh, so it's a fuel injected plane. So it's not priming with a primer like in a carbureted uh, plane. Uh, it's going to be fuel injected, so we still want to prime it, but it's just going to be a little bit different. Uh, the The startup procedure that I used before seemed to work okay, um, and we're just going to use, we're going to use that. What's up, Jerry? Pulling out my 141 checklist. They're, dude, they're pretty close. I mean, this is the exact panel of the, flame, the plane that I fly. Um, <laughs> hilarious, Scotty. We're gonna we're gonna light this thing up right now. Uh, okay, so let's do. Oh, I have everything that's turned on on my panel. What's all that? There we go. Okay, everything is now off. So we're gonna get the brake is set. Parking brake is down here, so that is that is set. It's kind of a finicky little bastard. And we're going to turn the batteries on. We're going to get the beacon on. Um, and then we're going to go mixture is going to be full rich. Props full forward. And then we're going to give it like half throttle probably. And we're going to hit the fuel pump. Okay. Crack the throttle a little bit there. And let's light them up see if this works what do you know so I'd be kinda curious what what they really mean by priming needed uh, if we can go in and like I'll probably try to like reset it and see if it won't start because that was one thing that the X-Plane 11 version did, is it just started up, like, fired up instantly every single time. Uh, which, 
was fine and it enabled me to go through the real world startup procedure that I was being taught, go through the motions of it and pretty much be assured that the plane was going to start. Unlike the rep pack where you, if you go through the real world uh, procedure, sometimes it wanted to do things a little bit differently. It would like flood too easily. Um, so that it was kind of nice where like I knew it was going to start. So that that is uh, that is good. Okay, so avionics are coming on. We're gonna get we're gonna get some of the lights on and listen to this guy purr. Yeah, cycle the mixture. Um, well, I don't think you you wouldn't really cycle the mixture. You would just you would pump the pump the throttle, and that's what. Like the the carbureted plane that I started on, I never primed it. I would just pump the throttle three times. The plane now likes it better if you prime it. Every engine's a little bit different, and just it's a matter of learning, learning whatever plane you're in. Uh, okay, so we're gonna do. So already, I noticed that there's no. Standby. It adjusts the non standby one. That is really weird. Okay. So, already a little quirk with my SciTech radio panel is that it, it adjusts the active. Advise on initial contact. You have information, India. It's weird. John Wayne Airport. ATIS information, India. 0153 Zulu. Wind two four zero at six. Visibility one zero. Few clouds at four thousand five hundred. Few clouds at one one thousand. Temperature one two. Dew point four. Altimeter three zero zero five. Arriving and departing runways two zero left, two zero right. Visual approaches in use. VFR departures contact Oh, there, there is no standby. Course heading, altitude, and if flight following is Good call, Adone. All runway assignments and holder instructions. Advise on initial contact. You have information, India. Good call, dude. John. Look at that. This is <laughs> this is what is so great about having s people way smarter than me <laughs> in this, uh, hanging out here. That's awesome. Twenty-one eighty-five. Okay, so com one does work. Com two, there's no there's no standby. That's you you're way smarter than me. <laughs> yeah, dude, yes you are. Um I've just flown with a with a KX170. All right. Well, you're still smarter than me. Okay, so we're going to get our clearance out of here and we're just going to stay in the pattern um and I think we'll be pretty happy with the left side, I think. Okay. Oxnard Tower Cessna 575 November Delta clear runway 25 at Charlie. I'd like to uh Taxi back to the run up and set up for an IF. Did you even with the with the one hundred Q? Delta taxi to run up via Fox Shot around the circle there. Taxi to run up via Fox Shot five seven five to number Delta. Jumping clearance, Cherokee A three three six four. Information India like to stay in the pattern. A three three uh Number three three six four John Lane Clarence. Contact John Lane Clarence here request. Alright, going to ground, Cherokee eight three three six four. Okay. Uh that is a new voice. Um So we'll see. So John Wayne likes to be like clearance, um you request pattern work with clearance and then they tell you to squawk VFR and you're on your way. Um Obviously, that didn't happen. That's okay. <clears throat> Jumping ground, Cherokee 83364. Jays with information India, close traffic. And we are ready to taxi. 83364, John Wayne ground, runway 20 right at Kilo, taxi via Bravo Kilo. Bravo Kilo 20 right, and we're going to stop off at the tower run up as well. Roger. Uh, cool, okay. Your airport never uses clearance. Oh. 
Cessna. Yeah, so like a lot of the uh, the um, uh, the pilot edge controllers that have been around for a little bit longer have gotten really, really good at the tiny little oddities with John Wayne. Uh, and I can tell like with a new voice, um, you know, there's just, there's some, there's some things that John Wayne does that most airports don't. And unless you kind of either operate out of John Wayne or study it or watch a lot of videos or whatever, uh, you, you might not know what those, um, uh, little things are. So we're going to request, uh, two zero left. We're going to go on, on the left side. Uh, I think, um, what's up UAV? Not late at all. Ready for departure. IFR. Uh, are we going to go on the left side or the right side? I guess we'll go on the right side. It just gives us... It's a little bit more standard. It's a 1,000-foot pattern instead of... Well, I, I should say it's a 950-foot pattern versus a... Um, I open the window. Uh, it's a 950-foot pattern versus an 800 foot pattern on the other side um, which gives us a little bit extra room altitude wise to play with so that's that's fine got it these these taxiway lights are the worst all right well so far it feels it looks and feels like a just flight plane it's great Taxi's nice. It actually feels pretty good on the rudders. Um, that that is awesome. All right, so first let's do a little control check. That looks good there. That looks good there. And a little, little stabilator back there it looks nice. Uh, we'll get the mixture going full rich and. Let's see if the RPMs actually drop. Yeah, we have some dropped RPMs. One of the few planes in uh, Microsoft Flight Sim that actually we get a, uh, a drop in RPM. Oh, that sounds awesome. That is way better than the X-Plane one. The X-Plane one was almost like too instantaneous on the RPM drop, and that felt like there was a little bit of a delay, and the, the sounds were really good. That's awesome. Sweet, okay, let's, let's lean that a little bit. Beach, then direct, maintain 2,000, expect 3,000, 5 minutes after departure. Departure frequency 128.1, squawk 7423. At departure heading at 220, radar vector seal 2,000 initial, 3,010, 128.1, squawk 7423, 68 Alpha Sierra. Alpha Sierra, is that correct? Okay. German Tower, Cherokee, 83364, continue. Right 3364, and right 20 right at Kilo, taxi via Bravo Kilo. Bravo Kilo, 20 right, Cherokee, 83364. Cool. So let's um, see how this thing looks from the exterior as we taxi. I really should load up with one of the newer liveries because this is um, this was a livery created for the X-Plane version um, it still looks freaking amazing tower, like tower, way better in the run -up, and I'd like to, uh, Man, hear that sound that engine real. sounds awesome too yeah I, I, I dig that a lot whoa hey <laughs> Whoops. Camarillo Airport. 
Oh, you know what I didn't do um, was set the DG, but that's quite alright. Maintain 4,000. Uh, departure frequency 124.7. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's a, it's, it's ported over, Disco. But yeah, it's... That's that's not bad though, right? Day day one personal livery. It's pretty good. Uh, Gecko, right rudder. Thank you so much, man, for three months. I appreciate that, dude. One four two three. Another painted wheels. Are just, just so so ridiculous, and it's so dirty. <laughs> All right, let's get this thing closed up. Uh, Lock that. Okay, so we're gonna do a couple of um, we're gonna do a series of landings and just see how it feels. So the first probably two are gonna be just standard regular landings. Uh, we'll do short approach. We'll do uh, short landing, soft field, um, and just kind of get it like, like really feel the plane out, like we would, you know, learning a new type and and see how it feels. Um, it's very nose heavy. It needs power. It, um, you know, you still got to be very mindful of the airspeed on this. But I I think we'll have fun kind of feeling this thing out and seeing how it lands and how it looks, feels, and sounds and stuff. Uh, it should be cool. <laughs> I know I, sh I should figure out a way to get a little see can we get it something like that okay Okay. Frequency 135.4, squawk 1651, 888, junkie, please. That DG is so slow. Johnny Tower, Cherokee A3364, holding short 20 right at Kilo. Number 8334, John Wayne Tower, uh, make right close traffic, report midfield downward, runway 20 right at Kilo, quit for takeoff. Quit for takeoff, 20 right at Kilo, we'll call you midfield, Cherokee A3364. Alright, so we got lights coming on. Camera is on. Mixture is full, Rick. Action. Right. Left is clear. Right is clear. For flight, you need Entered to... Entered runway 20 right. 5,300 feet. Shh. <laughs> Shh. <laughs> okay. There we go. <clears throat> I do kind of want to get, like, a nice gear up view. That looks like a good one right there. Let's find the center line and listen to this thing go. El Monte Ground, uh, Diamond, uh, KDA Junkie Whiskey, South of Charlie, with the weather at 71. Sounds great. Uniform is current on my one nine attack would be It's a little sticky. That's the one nine there, the Alpha Bravo, well, you're at the uniform. Here's coming up. John Wayne Ground, Twin Star. 68 Alpha Sierra, West Ram, uh, taxi IFR. First 68 Alpha Sierra, John Wayne Ground, runway 20 right at Kilo, taxi via Bravo Kilo. Control right, Bravo Kilo, 68 Alpha Sierra. Dude, that sounds great. Oh man, this thing sounds so good. This sounds way better than the X-Plane version. We're climbing out way too slow. Caution, TFR ahead. Okay, so we're gonna keep this one as standard as possible here. Oh, this sounds so good. There's our pattern altitude, right over the 55. Dude, it's saying it's awesome. It's really awesome. Yeah, it's forty-five bucks, but man, it is freaking dialed in. Santa Barbara, Clarence King Air nine or six three. I have already camped out. Let's kilo. 
You gotta trim this thing like crazy though. Direct. Maintain 3000. Expect 9000 once you're going to pass departure. Departure frequency 120.55. Squawk 6546. Hey, bird. Whoa, buddy. All right. Uh, we are Sweet clear plane. to November Foxtrot Golf. Genetics, thank you so much. 22 months. It's a very sweet plane. Sierra X-ray Charlie, Victor 208, Oceanside. 3000, 0 0.55, squawk 6456. Number 33, Lima after Ventura, Victor 208, Santa Catalina. I haven't tried it yet, Airplane Man. John Wayne Tower, Twin Star 68, Alpha Sierra, holding short, 20 right. Number 364, right to zero right, quick for the option. 364 clear for the option, 20 right. Number 33, Lima, after Ventura, Victor 208, Santa Catalina. Good. And the rest of the Good job right there. Okay, so there's 65, or there's 70. After Ventura, Victor 208, Santa Catalina. I'm looking at 60, uh, 60, 65 for touchdown. Number 33, Lima, every back is correct. Number 66, uh, correction, number 6, right off of Sierra, John Wright Tower, runway 20 right, line up and wait. Line up and wait two zero right six eight out here. Okay, now we're down. Our, our tower says that my flight is being held in the run up area. Run up and leave, ready for ice. We're trying to set the time for don't talk. Our tower runway two five quick for takeoff. Runway two five quick for takeoff. Trim, trim, trim. November eight eight eight. Let's climb out a little bit, a little bit faster now. Clouds look okay though. Hello, hi. Uh, aim for Hulu. Welcome. Dude, seriously, it is all about the trim on this one. I am not a DME guy, so I haven't even haven't even bothered, honestly. All right, climbing out. Climbing out. So 60 actually, 65 was, was too fast. I think we're going to be in the, um, I think we'll be in the 50s by the time we're touching down, honestly. So we'll keep, keep that in mind. I was not committed to landing, so I let that one float because I was probably going to go around. He gave me that clear, uh, that option clearance right at the end oh. well we'll just we'll chalk that up to um, testing climb out performance with the gear down how about that <laughs> so I um, John Wayne Tower Cherokee 83364 midfield right down when 2 right Put option two zero right, Cherokee three six four. So I used to fly with the gear down in X plane almost exclusively. Um, because I was training in an archer, and I would um, do all like my calculations, my cross country calculations, and everything um, in this in the simulator. But because it was with the, you know, it was in an arrow instead of an archer, um, everything was faster. So I just, I left the gear down all the time. And I would fly that way. Like, I did full streams with, and I'm still saying Cherokee, because I don't want to say arrow and mess up the real call sign in my head. So I'm still saying Cherokee. Um, but yeah, so, all right, so we got three green. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so on this one, let's actually... I'm going to just focus on on the plane on this this time. How about that for a 
novel idea. There's 65 right there. Let's see. 60. I'm, looking, I'm aiming right for the numbers right there. Power is idle, so a little bit past. 60, so I was like 58 probably. Okay, so flaps are up, prop is up. So it's a little bit squirrely on the ground. It's a little squirrely on the ground. But that is, that was good. All right, so we're rotate, tap the brakes, gear up. Props coming back just a little bit because this plane is not a bonanza. And we'll probably uh, need all the power, all the bite they can get. Uh, I fly an uh, archer. So, I mean, it, it like literally this plane, this is the livery. Like identical. That's why it says archer on the side. Um, panel is almost exactly the same. But this is uh, this has 20, 20 extra horsepower uh, with a retract, so it's very it's a lot more nose heavy than the than the Archer. So it it um, will fly a lot differently, but um, I really did my best to not look at look at how much faster we're climbing out with <laughs> the gear up what do you what do you know um okay so pull uh it does have autopilot yes it does Diamond Tower, Cherokee, A3364, midfield right downwind, 2 zero right, request short approach. 364, right, 2 zero right, clear short approach. Clear short approach, 2 zero right, Cherokee, 364. Okay, props will forward, gears coming down, and let's see how quickly we can get down. We're going to go full flaps, 3 green. Uh, Got to do a better job, a little bit, a little bit better. So one thing that I notice on this model versus the X-plane version is the um, it's not as direct. Like there's a little bit of a delay in some of the inputs, and I and that's better. Um, it feels more realistic. the The X-plane version. As, as good as it was, it did have a little bit of um, too, it was like too quick and direct. So I did not cut that short enough. I'm going to try that one more time. I think I think I could just dive, dive bomb that one. Uh, okay. Here we go. We're down. Power. Yeah. Oh, it's it's really touchy on the ground. It's really touchy on the ground. Tap the brakes. Gear coming up. I'm gonna keep the props up. Um, yeah, they really did a uh, amazing job on this. <laughs> uh, Giggity boo! It really doesn't matter. It's whatever you have. Whatever's available. I I like the PA28 just a personal preference but there's a reason why 172s are um, as ubiquitous as they are because they're they're great planes um, yeah well yeah it does have wear on uh, like a persistent state so it that is on I you know it remains to be seen how accurate it is or what it actually does but it does it does have it um, iOS Duo Kings, welcome. Uh, the costs are actually, it, it depends, man. The the Piper that I train in is like the cheapest plane on the line <laughs> when I first started. So it, it just depends on on the plane itself. Joint Tower, Cherokee, 83364, midfield, right down, and 20 right, request uh, short approach. 3, three, three six, one, one, seven, short approach, 
Code option two zero right Cherokee three six four. Hello. Hello. Okay, so I'll, there's everything down. Gears down. Flaps are full. And we're gonna just trim, trim. We're at that was wow. That was a hundred and fifty feet above uh, pattern altitude. So this will give you an idea of how much of a brick uh, Piper arrows are. So that is full flaps, gear down, 150 feet above pattern altitude, um, straight to the numbers. Power idle. Whoa, and it runs out, it runs out of elevator. <laughs> okay, that was a little bit uh, test pilot -y, but there we go. Gear coming up. John Wayne Clarence, Cardo 20313, with an I-1 Clarence to John Wayne, we have India. I'm also not noticing that annoying red glow from the in, from the red interior showing on the dash. I get it an XP. Interesting. Okay. God, it sounds so good. Sounds so good. All right, so I'm gonna go with a short field here, and let's let's maybe be a little bit aggressive on the on the short field and see see how this uh, actually goes. It's climbing out pretty good though. Tower Cherokee 83364 midfield, right downwind, 20 right. November 83364, clear for the option. Clear to option 20 right, Cherokee 364. Uh, Julia? Okay, so we're beam the numbers there, so gear coming down. Props full forward, mixture's full. Fuel, we're good. Um, we're going flying on Sunday. Double date to um, Santa Paula. Okay, and now we're going to extend this a little bit. This, that's as much extending as I want to do. Second notch in. Fernando six three three Lima San Barbara Tower runway two five five for takeoff. Okay, let's get established a little bit early so there's full flaps. Right there, and keep it back on the power. You still got a trim, lots of trim. Power back, still a little bit high, but I think we should be should be established here by the time we turn on to final enough. Short final runway two zero right. Yeah, it gets so. Just you run out of um, elevator with the power out so you need you need a little bit of power in to maintain any type of elevator authority all right we're going for the piano keys there's 65 which seems like a pretty comfortable uh, short approach speed for this just pull it back pull it back there's 60 i let that float a little bit So it is hella squirrely. <laughs> it's hella squirrely on the ground. Okay, flaps are coming up. Mixture's coming back. Strobes are coming off. Charming Tower, Cherokee 83364. We'd like to we're clear runway 20 right at uh, where? Juliet, and like to taxi to the tower run up for uh, departure. 
Eight three three six four. Left on Bravo to Tower. Run up and you can call ground when ready. Oh, you're already on the ground. That's fine. So, uh, no, you're not. Eight three three six four. Left turn on Bravo to the Tower. Run up and call ground when you're ready to go back to the runway. All right, left turn on Bravo to Tower. Run up and we're gonna get a clearance as well. So we'll uh, we'll let ground know when we're ready to taxi. <laughs> you know, I I actually kind of feel like it's the uh, the opposite a little bit. Like there's there is a little bit of slushiness with um, Microsoft versus X Plane, and I don't think it's actually for the worse. I I think some of it is a little bit better, honestly. So I'm not. It's just different. It's it's just like different types of planes, you know. Like they they just handle differently. They they react differently. This feels like the biggest efficiency in this plane right now is the ground handling. Um, that is a little bit. Um, it's a little bit goofy. So I'm gonna probably update the sensitivity on the rudders. Um, do you have linear controller curve set? Uh, let's check that out because I don't. I don't know. Two zero three one three traveling ground runway two zero right taxi via Bravo Okay, that was two zero right. By a Bravo, and you're cut out on the last part. November 313 was 20 right via Bravo Kilo. Bravo Kilo, 20 right. Um, okay, so reactivity. Yeah, I feel like. Try dead zone at 15. Yeah, I might, I might help. I don't think Y axis. Twin Star Six Eight. But yeah, we'll we'll try we'll try that, and I can always come back to that. Six Eight Alpha later. Sierra Jumping Tower, Runway Two Zero Clear Land. Clear Land Two Zero Right. Six Eight Alpha Sierra. Okay. 